So in this class, uh, let's talk about the selective laser centering process. So let's look at this video first. Cheers. Okay. Um, as shown in the uh, in the video, basically the in the L, um, SLS process, um, the laser will be guided. To pass through a uh, F-theta lens, and then uh, the laser spot will uh, center selectively center uh, the pattern of the powder layers. Um, so this F-theta lens is is the same uh, component as the one used the po photopolymerization. So the function of this F-theta lens is to make sure uh, the projected laser will be on the focus when center when centering uh, uh, the powder material. Uh, another uh, important point here is this. Um, so basically there will be a readings heater in the chamber of the machine that will maintain the powder at a, a elaborated temperature. Uh, basically usually the, the temperature is like 10 uh, Celsius below its melting point. Uh, so this higher temperature of the powder bed uh, will first um, increase the laser scanning speed uh, because uh, the laser does not need to uh, heat the powder too much because uh, it's only like 10 degree uh, lower uh, than the melting point. Another uh, function of this is uh, it, it reduces the, uh, the temperature uh, difference between the melting point and also the uh, powder bed, which will reduce the uh, shrinkage during the process. Um, so another point is here. Basically, uh, 
during the process, the infused powder surrounds the part and it acts as the support material. So usually it does not require support material uh, in the SLS process. So uh, for the particle centering and melting, what happens is something like this. First of all, uh, the particles is free flowing and then some neck will be generated when the heat source is applied to fuse these particles. And there will be some open pores uh, uh, generated during this, uh, I mean, will be eliminated during this fusing, uh, this centering or melting process. Uh, but usually there will be some open pores still remaining which is undesired. So there are four different types of powder consolidation. Uh, the first one is the solid state centering, just like the one shown here. So there's no melting between this process and uh, the particle will be uh, diffused together without any melting. Um, the second one is the liquid phase centering. So there are two components uh, there, one melts and the other doesn't. The one, the melts um, uh, component will fill the uh, region, uh, will fill the uh, space uh, between the uh, unmelt ones. Um, the third one is the partial melting. So not the full bulk of the particle melts, only the skin of the surface melts. And the last one is the full melting. Um, so for this kind of uh, um, um, consolidation, uh, the final uh, part will be close to a full density part. So there are several pri uh, primary uh, process parameters, uh, in including this uh, laser powders, uh, laser power. I mean, uh, so basically, uh, it measures the energy used for uh, the centering uh, and uh, a typical number will be 2 to 35 watts for nylon material. Uh, the second one is the laser spot size around 400 microns and the scanning speed uh, something between 500 to 3500 millimeter per second depending on the power. Uh, another uh, important thing is the hatching spacing. Uh, basically, it measures the distance between the two cent central line of the tra tra neighboring traces. Usually, it's around uh, 250 microns. Uh, layer thickness, uh, typically 100 microns, and the powder bed temperature, 120 to 175 Celsius. Celsius. Um, so, um, again, the entire chamber is heated to about uh, 10 uh, Celsius, uh, Celsius below the melting point of powder. And the benefit is first, uh, increase the laser scanning speed, and the second, reduce the residual stresses. Um, another thing is uh, the entire process will take place in a nitrogen atmosphere in order to reduce the oxidation of the nylon powders. And um, in the SLS process, the uh, most widely used material is this uh, polyamide, uh, which essentially is the nylon material. And uh, although there are um, uh, the uh, amorphous uh, thermoplastic used in the uh, SLS process, but they are rarely used. Uh, the main reason is the nylon uh, or the semi or full crest stone lean uh, material usually um, it melts and uh, uh, flows better than the thermoplastics, which is essential to produce a uh, the reliable uh, layers. So that's why uh, the thermoplastic 
uh, of, of former thermal plastic are rarely used. Also, there, are some, there could be some reinforcement used uh, to improve the mechanical properties like this uh, glass fiber or carbon fiber uh, used uh, in the uh, SLS process. Basically, the, this material will be combined with the uh, base material like a uh, nylon material. But there's a, a very important point here is, sorry, the density of the reinforcement uh, need to be similar as the base material. Uh, the reason is if uh, there's one of the material takes uh, too much portion, there will be a, a segregation, uh, segre segregation uh, effect, meaning uh, the two material will tend to separate from each other and you will have uh, uh, unevenly distributed material properties in that cases. So let's look at the phase transition temperatures. So for the semi uh, crest uh, crystalline uh, thermoplastics, the glass transition temperature is around and below the room temperature. I mean, in, at prat in practical, it usually uh, it, uh, it's above the uh, room temperature. Um, also, there's a distinct melting point uh, in the uh, phase transition. But for the amorphous uh, thermoplastic, there's no clear melting point. There are only a range of the melting. Also, the uh, glass transition temperature is around 100 Celsius, uh, which is undesired for the process. Um, but still, there could be a range if you look at the uh, glass transition temperature and the melting temperature for even the semi-crystalline uh, thermoplastic. That is because the uh, molecular weight of the polymer will affect these numbers. So it's not surprising if you could you just say some uh, you just see some uh, temperature range for this. Um, so there's a experiment called differential scanning uh, calorimetry analysis which is used to determine these temperatures, uh, the phase transition temperatures. So what it essentially do is, you basically put the polymers over here and there will be a, a heat source applied to uh, gradually melt the material. And uh, then uh, the uh, temperature will be uh, measured to have such kind of curve. Uh, as you can see here, uh, this, this part shows the heating process, right? And here is the melting point. And uh, after that, uh, you can see here is the crystallization temperature. Basically, here is the melting, and then this is the cooling. All right. And uh, also, uh, the ideal polymer uh, used in the SLS process will be the one that is, has a uh, narrow melting range, something like this. That means the, uh, uh, the difference between the... Um, that, uh, so basically, uh, that means uh, near the uh, peak point uh, around the... Uh, melting point, it has a small such kind of gap. And uh, basically here shows the two different material. One is a nylon 12, another one is nylon 6. And obviously the nylon 12 is more suitable using the uh, SLS process as it has a narrow gap over here compared to the nylon 6. And uh, basically the rate of uh, polymer crystallization is at minima near the melting point and at maximum between the uh, uh, glass transition temperature and also the uh, 
uh, the melting temperature. Um, and, uh, and another important thing for this cross totalization is the, uh, if there are overlap uh, uh, of the melting window and the crystallization window, um, that will be the undesired um, properties. Because um, uh, we don't want any uh, significant crystallization to occur to lower layer during the building due to the pow powder bed heating. Um, that will make the part to have the uh, uh, the thermal uh, the, uh, residuals uh, stress, the residual thermal stress, which uh, eventually it will distort the shape. And uh, for the crystallization, another thing we would like to have is uh, a wide range between the melting and uh, re uh, crystallization temperature. So among the three curves, uh, we could tell basically for the black one. As you can see, this is the melting temperature and this is the, I'm sorry, I think I draw another. And this is the, this is the um, crystallization, recrystallization temperature. And uh, this range is bigger and uh, that is better for the uh, SLS process. Um, and another property is the melt viscosity. Um, the goal is the viscosity of the polymer at the processing temperature should be lower enough to flow out such that a full density part could be built because if the uh, melt flow out, it will spread out and make uh, the part a higher density. Uh, but that should be a trade-off uh, because the lower viscosity usually uh, will lead to a high shrinkage and a poor uh, uh, part accuracy as a result. So you have to really uh, figure out a good trade-off between this viscosity and also the shrinkage. And again, the uh, melt viscosity is uh, linearly related to the uh, molecular, molecular weight of the polymer. And uh, so another uh, very important concept is the melt flow index. So it measures how well the melting plastic flows at a given temperature. It is uh, based on this uh, standard ASM, ASTM D1239. And let's look at how it is uh, measured. Okay, so for the melt um, flow index, um, the, uh, there's a essential uh, property here that is the polymer chain length will increase with the time at elevated temperature. Um, that make the uh, melting temperature will shift as a result of this. Um, for example, um, if we look at this uh, figure. So here, this point shows if the powder have never been heated up, uh, that's the, uh, it's uh, um, the M uh, MPI, the melt 
uh, flow of index of the uh, of the um, um, material powder. But after one time of uh, heating up, you can see it goes to here. This is the recycled part, means it is it has been um, uh, uh, heated up, but it has not been uh, fused during the process. Uh, you can see it drops significantly from here to here. And uh, what will bring to the uh, mechanical property for this drop? So as you can see here, the tensile stress decreases dramatically if we look at the, uh, uh, the if we look at the two uh, the, these uh, uh, curves. So you can see it, the yield uh, strength of of the material drops something like this, right, or this and the elongation also increases. That means the mechanical property of the uh, powder will degrade uh, after the heating. Even it does, it's, it's not been, uh, being uh, fused in the uh, uh, process. So considering that, when you reuse the powder, you usually you want to uh, follow this rule of thumb. That means you use one third of the new powder, means never being used in the process. And another one third powder from the overflow bin, and another one third used powder from the build chambers. And you might ask, what is this? So basically, let's look at the process. Let me draw an illustration. So let's see, this is the uh, printing bed, and you have a roller, move from here to here, right? And you have a pile of material. And when the roller move, so uh, this, this excess material will be removed. And it turns out will, it will go to here. And uh, there will be a box to uh, contain this excess material. This is the powder from the overflow beans. Uh, basically, it's not heated up to the uh, elev elev uh, elevated uh, temperature like the one on the building platform. So we uh, always include the new powder and the one from the overflow bin and the one from the build chambers in order to compensate the de uh, degradation of the mechanical property for uh, the uh, recycled powder. So there are, are different equipment manufacturers. The, uh, the biggest players are the 3D systems and uh, EOS. And all, uh, why there are so many companies uh, pr producing uh, the, this uh, SLS uh, machines? That is because the fundamental patent for this process has been expired. That's why many companies just uh, produce their own. Um, so let's look at the design, some design principles for the SLS process. And we got uh, the, uh, the information from the EOS document. And you can check the original uh, document by searching this name. Um, the first is the uh, step, uh, stair steppings. Basically, <coughs> sorry. To avoid step on the surface, the angle of the plane should be zero or larger than 20 degrees to the x, x y uh, area. Let's look at this uh, uh, figures. As you can see here, you should either print something like this, which is totally on the uh, building platform, or if you want to tilt uh, the, uh, the surface a little bit, make sure uh, to make uh, it's the tilted angle is larger than 20 uh, degrees. So as you can see here, it, the one, uh, the tilted angle, uh, I mean, for the surfaces with the tilted angle less than 20, there are very clear step, uh, stair stepping effect over here. All right. um, so for printing the pin and the holes, um, Basically, um, because there are, it does not require the support material, 
and also the uh, uh, during the printing, uh, the part uh, the powder excess powder powder will fill these gaps. So it is possible to print uh, the pre-assembled assemblies. Uh, for example, in these cases, uh, during the printing process, the material will excess material will fill in this uh, gap, and uh, this material inside here will not be centered, such that after you uh, after printing, you could just take out and uh, sorry and uh, blow away the material from this region and you have a assembly obtained. So there are some guidance for the process. That is, if the uh, gap uh, in the xy direction, it should be 0.3 millimeter to 0.5 millimeter. Uh, so uh, for example, in this case, uh, that means the, the uh, gap here and here should be uh, within this range. If you flip this by 90 degrees, uh, that means the gap will be in the z direction, and uh, then the uh, it should it has a loose uh, constraint here, which is 0.5 to 0.6 millimeters. Um, so another. Uh, Another uh, requirement for uh, build two assemblies but separately without uh, build together, then you could have a tighter clearance here that is 0.1 millimeter diameters, uh, I mean distance for the loose connections. Basically, it's shown here. Uh, but remember, uh, it is in the case you build the two parts separately. If you build them together, then the, such small clearance won't work. Uh, the, part, uh, the material inside these regions will be tend to melt, to, to be centered, and you cannot take it out after the printing. For the fonts, uh, basically it's also from the uh, use uh, suggestions, and uh, a minimal font size 14 uh, suitable for every directions, and this uh, uh, science uh, serif font is recommended to uh, by by the uh, the uh, uh printers. Um, another uh, very interesting is the minimal feature size. Uh, for example, for the walls uh, in the x y direction, the minimal uh minimal wa wall thickness is point uh forty five to point seven millimeter. Uh, depends on the machine. Um, but usually, um, to achieve the best result and higher reputability, you need to like double it up, right? To, in order to have a safer uh, print. Uh, in the Z direction, uh, minimal wall thickness equals to one layer. That is 0 0.1 or 0 0.15 uh, millimeters. And for the pins, the minimum pin diameter is 0.8 millimeter. Uh, but again, you want to make it larger, like at least double it up to 0.8 millimeter. I mean, 1.8 millimeter. Uh, as you can see here, uh, for different wall thickness, uh, the difficulty to uh, print the gap will be different. So what does this wall thickness mean? So let's imagine this uh, surface is part of the block, right? And you have something like this, and something like this, and then given a larger block. So basically, this dimension here is 0.3 millimeter, and this one is 3 millimeter, and this one is 6. Uh, you can see if the wall thickness is, is bigger, uh, it has more difficulty to print um, these gaps. Um, that is because for a thicker part, uh, the heat this will be accumulated during the printing, and it turns out will uh, melt the material inside, which are supposed which are supposed to 
remaining powder, uh, but were, uh, but are uh, melt during the printing process due to this accumulated heat. So similarly for the uh, holes, um, if the wall is thicker, you will have more difficulty to print the holes. Uh, another uh, consideration is this uh, building uh, uh, building speed. Uh, basically, you always want to uh, reduce the Z height. For example, if uh, for part, if you design something like this or something like this, that means you uh, in in such in this case you cannot uh, put them together. You cannot net them together and such that you have a higher uh, Z height. And for this one, you could just uh, uh, nest them together such that uh, the Z height is reduced. Oh, another uh, consideration during the design for SLS is, for example, you have uh, spiral tubes like this. Uh, but for shape like this, it's really hard to uh, May, uh, to take the powder out of uh, this tube because during the printing the powder will be uh, tending to um, to be melt and uh, it's really hard to take it out to make this uh, hollowed tube uh, so for designing uh, the part to be printed using SLS you always need to consider about how the material access material could be uh, taken out after printing.